Okay, now we're ready to bake the simulation into the geometry. I want to do a couple of things before I do that, though. If you look at the default timeline or the default slider, if you're following along with your own scene, it goes from 0 to 100. Now, if I stop the simulation and I restart it, notice that the curtains drop a little bit and bounce and give us a bit of an unnatural uh, response to the simulation. And if we wait a little bit, the curtains settle down and gives us a nice billowing effect. We want to, we have to bake everything in the scene, but we don't really want to use that first sequence of the curtains bouncing and stretching and until they settle down. We really just want the nice part of the simulation. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that we have enough frames on our timeline to accommodate that. So I'm going to stop the simulation and I'm going to set the simulation, the, the set the start of the time segment or the timeline uh, into negative time. Okay. So I can, you know, maybe around uh, negative uh, 140, we'll start at negative frame 140. We're going to add plenty of time at the end of the timeline as well. And the reason for this is we're going to be using the, a modifier called the point cache modifier. And we're basically going to record all of this motion and then use it as almost like editing footage. We want to pull different clips that look best for the given situation. So what we want to do is we want to have a nice long sequence of frames to pull from, even though we might use them at different times and at different time scales. This will all be apparent in a few minutes when we start adding the point cache modifier to things. So let's go ahead and bake our simulation. So I'll go ahead and choose the simulation tools. And we're going to go ahead and just bake selected. This may take a few minutes, so I'll just go ahead and get things started. And then I'll pause the recording and come back when it's done. Okay, great. So our animation has now been baked. So when I scrub through here, we can see we have a nice long time sequence of animation. Additionally, you'll notice that we also get all of this stretching and settling out of the way so that by, by the time we hit frame zero, we're pretty much into a nice looking billowing curtain. So having negative frames there really helped us have the right type of animation that we would want to use on these curtains. The next thing that we want to do is in preparation of copying and duplicating these. Now we don't want to have to simulate all of that all of the time. We, we only want to simulate it once and reuse it. That's a good way to make use of our time. And uh, honestly, it, since this is just adding an accent to the scene, we really don't need to have a precise simulation every single time. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a modifier called point cache. And what the point cache modifier is going to do is it's going to see all of the vertex transformations in the curtains and just snap them up into a file that we can then use later. And it's much faster playback. It's much more efficient than having to re-simulate all of the time. I can go ahead and close my simulation tools here. And we'll just say a new file. And we'll uh, do a new one here. We'll call this curtain panel 2. And we'll just say we're going to use one file. Now, we, here's the start and end frame. Remember, the first uh, frames up until frame 0 were just of the fabric settling and getting into a nice rhythm there. So we don't need to start at negative 145. We'll just go ahead and set at 0. We're going to capture all 900 frames. And we'll go ahead and record. And what this will do is uh, very quickly went through there. Actually, let me go ahead and record it again so you can see what's going on. So there it goes. It's recording. It grabbed everything. It has all of files in there. Now at this point, I can actually turn off the M cloth modifier and we still have all of our animation there. Now it's ready to be applied to other objects. So what I can do is I'm going to go ahead and select this. I'm going to delete the point cache and I'm even going to delete the M cloth simulation and I'll, I'm going to hold down my control key and just slide that over and we're going to do copies here. So now I have copies of all of these panels. I can select the first one 
and we'll add the point cache modifier back in. I actually didn't really need to delete it the first time around. I could have just turned it off. So we'll go ahead and load this. All right, and so here is our curtain simulation. And I can go ahead and drag this to each one of these. Okay, and I'm gonna set my time slider back to frame zero because we don't need the negative frames anymore. Now you notice they're all doing the same thing. So how can we offset this? Well, remember earlier I mentioned that we wanted to record the point cache as if it were a clip of video and use it at uh, different times and different rates. And that's exactly what we're gonna do here. So remember our point cache starts at frame zero and goes to frame 900. So I have 900 frames of vertex animation that I can pull from to use an offset. So what we're going to do is just change the offset time of each one of these a little bit. Now, if I go ahead here in the point cache modifier down to playback range and I choose custom start, and I say, let's go ahead and start it at frame 100. What's gonna happen here is nothing's gonna happen on that curtain until frame 100, and then the first frame of the point cache animation begins, okay? so. It starts at 100, and it starts with the first frame of the cached animation. So setting the off start to a positive number isn't going to work for us. What we want to do is we actually want to offset that to a negative number. And what happens is by the time frame 0 begins playing, we're already 100 frames into the point cache. So it'll give us a little bit of, bit of an offset there. So for this one, we'll grab the third curtain. We'll change the custom start range. We'll do negative 300. And this is why I captured so many frames. I wanted a lot of frames to work with so that I could have a wide variety of motion here. So I'll do negative, and I'll just pick a, you know, a negative 450. All right, so now we have, using the same animation, using it four different times, we have four distinctly different types of animation. Now, if part of the animation looks a little unwieldy, like it gets a little too billowy, what we can also do is we can offset the strength and make it a little bit more subtle. So for example, on this one, uh, I'll go ahead and set the strength down to, uh, we'll do 0.5. And you can see that this one plays back at a distinctly softer rate or softer amount of animation, much more subtle motion. And that may actually look a little better. So I can go ahead and grab these guys and I'll do the exact same thing here. I'll do the strength at 0.5 here. I'll do the strength at strength of 0.5. There we go. And we'll do a strength of, we'll just do 0.6, make it a little bit more different still. So now we have nice, soft, billowing curtains. And if you play around with this a little bit, yes, you could absolutely do one or two different simulations and reuse those for different types of wind conditions or things like that. So that's a real easy way to get some nice, subtle motion into your scenes by just using the M cloth modifier from the Mass Effects toolbar doing a quick cloth simulation and then repeating it with point cache. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please share it and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.